guest on the show today. I'm very excited that he's here because he's helped Fortune 500 leaders, professional athletes, entertainers, hardworking individuals, and everyone in between exceed their wildest expectations in their life, business, and career. He spent three decades of setbacks, failures, breakdowns, losses, successes, and comebacks, and uses that knowledge to guide others toward lasting breakthroughs in any area of their life. Please welcome Stephen to the show. How are hey, you? Hey, how are you doing? It's so good to see you. Oh my I know, gosh. so good to see you too. I'm so glad that you are here. I know you're crazy busy, so we're just going to jump right into it because you've got some exciting stuff coming up, and I want everyone to hear about it. So I know that back in the late eighties that you were homeless and fast forwarding to now to 2021, you've got mm -hmm. seven businesses, you've got yep. eight figures, you've got so many employees in so many different States. And I really want to hear about when you're facing those setbacks, because I know a lot of us are with the year that we've come through, what's the most valuable thing that you could offer to us as we're kind of going through the slog. Yeah, I think the number one thing is going to come down to understanding that your level of expectation becomes your level of excellence. All right. So when I was homeless in the late 90s, um, I wasn't entirely sure about who I was as a person, what value I brought to the table. I had a low, uh, low level of significance and meaning. Um, I was desperately looking for a way out, desperately looking for a way forward. <clears throat> but not really understanding even at a global level what that means, right? What, what does that mean? And ultimately what I discovered is the expectations that I had for my life were guiding the decisions I was making in the moment. So the expectation of me in that, mo you know, in those years of being set on a course of not thinking I was ever going to have enough or being in an environment where there was never enough or, you know, but bills were always coming up and, and lights were always getting shut off and water is always getting all this kind of stuff. When you look at that holistically, what you realize is you, a lot of times we get indoctrinated in the wrong direction. And unless we shake out of that, ultimately what happens is, is we lose sight of who we really could become if we really tried. You know, fortunately for me, I had a, I had a great mentor, Steve Myrick and, and Susan Bass was another one, AKA Mama Wama. But, you know, both of them poured into me and believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. In fact, this one time, Steve actually told me, he says, do you want to learn to think like me? Now, Steve was a multimillionaire. He was a generous guy. He would put a thousand dollars under a basket of hush puppies and leave it for a single mother and do some pretty amazing things. He was also a very astute businessman who was constantly like driving the envelope or driving innovation or building new homes and all this kind of stuff. Cause he was a home builder here in Raleigh. Conversely, my dad was always working for Steve and conversely, we never really had money at the end of the following week. Right? So there's this, there's this element of what you expect ultimately becomes your level of excellence, right? If you expect yourself to never have enough or you expect yourself to be limited or you're expect, you know, we'll take your entrepreneur right now, right? So your entrepreneur right now is trying to figure out the best possible way to move forward. However, they are like on most entrepreneurs probably concerned on a regular basis. Do I really have what it takes? Is this really going to work? Am I ever going to get this thing off the ground? Or if I'm going to get this thing off the ground, can I ever get it to the next level? And at the end of the day, that comes down to the expectation factor. If you're so focused on the problem, you're never, ever going to be able to build momentum towards the solution, which is the end of the day, I think is what every entrepreneur needs to understand that their level of expectation is directly correlated to their level of excellence. And that level of excellence is directly correlated to their overall success and or failure in business. So why not start with healthier expectation? Do you think that that relationship with those mentors made you want to help others get through their setbacks? Abs I mean, absolutely. Think about it. I mean, I just got back from an amazing trip down in Florida, um, spending some time with with men and, and women I deeply respect at a conference. And I don't know about you, but I love conferences, right? I, I like to get out. I like to actually be around people and feel their Me energy. Too. Um, it's not that I'm not concerned about COVID and stuff like that. I take every precaution under the sun to make sure that you know, we stay healthy and all the good stuff. But what I've discovered is energy is contagious, right? Some call it vibration. Some call it God. Some call it universe. Whatever you want to call it. I don't, I don't care what you call it, right? I may call it God. Y'all may call it something different. That's fine. But I can sense someone else's presence. And I can sense if that person is going to retract and like take away from me. And I can also sense if that person 
um, is going to help me get elevated. Not, and, that, and that's not me asking them to do something for me. That's just me recognizing that they're further along and I've got a lot I can learn from that person. So it's like, Nick, come over here, dude. Sit down with me for a few minutes and tell me about this private equity world you've been walking around in. Mark, come over here, dude. Tell me about this, this uh, personal brand journey you've been walking around in, man, and this podcast stuff. Help me understand how to sharpen my skills and make myself better. But if you isolate yourself, which happens to a lot of entrepreneurs, I know I've done it a thousand times where I've kind of isolated myself in such a way that I, I didn't allow people to speak into me because I was scared that they would see that I didn't really know what I was doing or I was just trying to figure it out or I was trying to sharpen something. And what I've learned is the, the, the right relationships create the right revenue engine. The wrong relationships, unfortunately, destroy that same engine. So Steve Myrick and Susan Batts and Dave Ramsey and some of these other people, uh, our good friends, Rory and AJ Vaden, for example, these people are experts in their field, experts in their field. And the wise entrepreneur always understands, and I do mean always understands that they got to get around experts and they got to open their minds, their hearts, and their souls to allow that expert to pour into them. And if they'll do that, ultimately they get the great aha and every great aha creates a great new action. Well, and I think it's so important too, because you're right, we do tend to isolate ourselves, especially after what we just went through. But, mm -hmm. you know, trying to figure out what those traits are, what we're looking for. Like if one of our listeners is wanting to do that, what do you think the first step is? Like, how do you find those people to surround yourself with? What's your best tip on that? Well, all right. So the, the cool thing is never has it been easier in the entire world to find a mentor. Okay. Now, I teach this, uh, I'll go over this super quickly. I teach this four-part framework um, that's called the Mentorship Matrix. Now, I didn't completely develop it on my own. There was a good friend of mine, a guy by the name of Doug Stewart, did a TEDx talk. Um, uh, I think it's called the Five and a Half Mentors or something like that. I think it's still out there. And he talked about specific types of mentorship that you could then seek or stay away from, okay? And then I got to thinking, okay, well, if I'm going to look at mentorship holistically, and the number one thing that I often get, and I'm sure you get the same question, is, will you be my mentor? Will you help me? Will you teach me? And if I have the time and the capacity and whatever, I'm always willing to spend time with somebody and dig in deep and, and see what we can do. That being said, as you are trying to scale, you don't have access to all these people all the time, right? So what do you do? You, you have to look at other alternatives and, and the mentorship matrix or the four-part framework that I have there is one of those things that allows you to get immediate mentorship provided you're open to it, okay? So the first of the the first of the quadrants, if you will, of the mentorship matrix is nothing more than the peer to peer mentor, right? I consider you a, a peer, right? We're both in, we're both on this this journey to try to help people and try to grow and expand people's horizons. Um, help, I help them scale their lives. You help them scale their business. You know, and 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 ultimately they're both tied together, right? So when we get together, we always have a fired up conversation. We're always like sharing exciting stuff and 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 what's going on and what mentorship and, and what mentorship kind of comes back and forth. You know, we've we've had brief offline conversations about things that we're doing that then inspires the other. So that's a peer to peer, right? You're it's a ping pong person. You're like. Right. There's a ping pong ball going back and forth. The next one's a pretty important one. And this was the easiest one. And that was the aspirational mentor. So an aspirational mentor is nothing more than someone in, in whom you admire, respect and edify based on their quality of their character traits of where they are in their journey, given the fact that they probably lived out a similar upbringing or uh, earlier journey, for example. Um, you know, I. Dave, you take Dave Ramsey, for example, it's, it's, he's a guy I admire. Um, do I agree with everything that he does and says? Absolutely not. But do I agree with a lot of things that he does and says, and, and are there things that I want to emulate? Yeah, sure. Of course. And what I most admire about Dave is the fact that he started his business on a car table. Well, I started my business sleeping in a car, right? They're both incredibly humble. Now, Dave has gone on to build a major, major nine figure business, right? from that car table. Best believe there's something that I can watch just, just by watching him, okay? Emulating some of the behaviors, maybe ones that, that, that mean a lot to me, admiring people with a healthy level of dignity and respect and things of that nature. There are things that you can learn by modeling, right? Modeling is not a new concept. Modeling has been a concept for thousands of years. 
Watch somebody do something really well and do it like they do it. They called that apprenticeship back in the day, right? A master would teach an apprentice and the apprentice would one day take over as the master and then become the master and the, and the cycle would repeat itself, right? The third area is just as important, which is called the historical mentor. Now, this is one I totally ripped from Doug, right? This is one of his actually in his, in his TEDx talk, which everybody should go check out, by the way. And it's called the historical mentor, okay? The historical mentor is nothing more than history's evidence of mentorship in books, a printed resource, an ebook. Uh, you know, for me, it might be uh, 21 Irrefutable Laws or the Bible or, gosh, our good friend Rory's Take the Stairs or Procrastinate on Purpose, like Entree Leadership. All of these resources have mentors that you have access to when you don't actually have access to the actual mentor. You see what I'm saying? Totally. And that's at your fingertips. Yeah, absolutely. Especially right now with like all this yeah. technology that we have access to, podcasts, mm -hmm. you know, audiobooks, the whole yes. thing. Yeah. And, and that is the fourth one, which is the digital mentor. Look, there is literally no excuse, no excuse in today's time frame why you do not have access to grow in the specific area that you want to grow. You want to scale your business? Great. Listen to this and watch this podcast on a regular basis. Okay. Also look and see what other people are doing just as great a job as you are and building that out to make sure that there's access to that cat, that information. You want to have a healthier relationship. They got books on that. They got videos on that. They got podcasts on that. Right. That at the end of the day gets around this mentorship myth. All right. And the mentorship myth means I have to have direct access to a mentor in order to be mentored. No, what you have to do is you have to open yourself up to being mentored. That's it. Do that well and great things happen. Well, and I feel like some people, you're so right about that because people think that unless you're like on a weekly call with a mentor, then they're not mentoring you. But with social media and all those digital assets, there's so much information mm -hmm. that we can gather from all these people that we admire that we mm -hmm. don't have to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them weekly. We've got so much stuff that we can learn yeah. from them. Well, here's the thing. If you spend too much time with your mentor, you're constantly learning and never doing. True. Right? So when it comes down to it, the private mastermind programs and the, and the, and the private coaching and stuff like that, you don't want to be doing that every single day. You don't want to be doing that every single week. You want to have a mentoring session an account of which encompasses an accountability and responsibility session rolled up into it. And you want to apply what has been learned. You see what I'm saying? And yeah. then come back to your mentor. And that's where I think we all get it wrong. In fact, you know, the, the whole personal development industry um, is full of what I used to be, which is this, uh, what, are, what do they call it? The, a personal development junkie, <laughs> yeah. right? I just wanted to, I just wanted to get my hit on my personal development. I want somebody to teach me something new. And then I wanted to think about that something new all day. And then as a result, five years go by and I haven't done a, done, uh, done a, done a single thing. Definitely. Yeah. You know? Yep. So I think at the end of the day, this concept of mentorship just has to be looked at from a different angle. And that's one of the reasons I love what you do so much is because you pour into people, but when you do so, you hold them accountable before you pour into them again. And I think we can all learn something from you. I, I think that it's so important because you're right. There's some, I mean, even us as people that are doing all the things, it's still hard not to get sucked into that, to be like, teach me that, like, just to go mm -hmm. find things. And when you're like, no, you need to go do these six things <laughs> before mm -hmm. you can do that. I, I just, I think that that is such a good piece of advice for everybody listening that you've got to do. Mm -hmm. It's called, it's called, it's called focus. Yes. Yep. You can't. You can't drive a nail into a board if you're always hitting around the nail. You've got to hit the nail. Yeah, and nails absolutely. are tiny. And you can either hit your thumb or you can hit the nail. You pick. Well, and I'm so glad that you brought up like, you know, getting out and being with other entrepreneurs. Because I know you have an event coming up very soon. Yes, I'm, I'm totally stoked about it. It's going to be amazing. Um, it's called Transform You Live. Um, I've got 13 amazing thought leaders coming in. Uh, Tom Bilyeu, Lisa Bilyeu, Ev, uh, Anthony Trucks, Evan Carmichael, Aaron Blue Lago, Ray Higdon, Ira Davis, Mark Drager, Mel Abraham. Like, it is a it's a power-packed event. Crazy awesome. And here's, the, here's, what, here's what I think makes it unique. This event is designed to meet you where you are, and physically grab your hand and take you where you need to go. And when I look at all the events and the conferences out there in the world, 
Um, I'm not saying anything bad about them because they're, they're great conferences and stuff like that. But I feel like one of the reasons people don't take action is because they're never taught how to take action. And the only going back to that mentorship and that apprenticeship thing, the only way you can teach someone how to take action is to literally grab their hand and sit them beside you and say, watch me. Okay. Now you do it. Okay. Watch me again. Now you do it. Okay. Watch me again. Now you do it. And transform you live is designed to be that, that scaling up of life, that life enhancement process. And it's over the course of three days. Um, it's live and virtual. So if you're like me and you're like, please let me go to a live event, please. Right. Uh, we've got a few seats left. I'd love to have the audience check it out. Um, if you want to attend virtually, cause maybe you're like, Hey, I'm, I'm just, I'm still trying to feel okay with this COVID stuff. Like just give me, give me a minute. We have all the technology in the world to have a highly interactive experience for you to actually level up in whatever capacity you want. And the best part about this entire thing is, is it's affordable. I intentionally have gotten every, and you know this about me, because you know some of the other things I've been working on. I intentionally get things as close to, as close to cost as possible, because it's not about, it's not about revenue. It's not about market. It's, it's, it's about impact. How many people, I mean, think about Steve Mark, right? He, he poured into me and poured into me and poured into me and, and he never charged me a dime for it. And now I get to stand on stages. Now I get to write books. Now I get to see amazing people. Now I get to work with, you know, fantastic soccer moms and dads who just need a, who just need a break. Mm -hmm. Right. And give that same aha that he gave me. Right. So this environment is, is both community. It's family friendly. And most of all, it's designed to actually give you the practical step on how to level up. Well, and I think that's one thing that a lot of conferences lack, like you mentioned, is that mm -hmm. you come away with all these amazing ideas, but there's no mm -hmm. application to it. And so yeah. this event is unique because it's really going to have that application element to it, which is so cool. Like people are going to leave here with doing things. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which means in order to get resulting or re the result of, you have to do the thing of. Right. Totally. Right? And people don't do the doing because they don't have the confidence in the, the fact that they can follow through because no one's taught them. That's where I think that I come in. That's where I think I, I offer a unique position to the marketplace in that I'm not going to let you fail. I'm not going to let you fail. You know, and you, it, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and, and, and at the end of the day, I think that's what people need most. Well, and I was thinking of the quote that it's like a rising tide raises all ships. That's exactly mm -hmm. what you're doing. Yeah. Like yeah. everybody's going to walk away with better information, better techniques, better application for ev not just in what you're presenting, but also for the rest of their lives, you know, all yeah. of these different things that we do as business owners and things like that. Like that's just exactly. going to ripple out so much more. Exactly. Well, yeah. if you think about it, let's, you know, let's, let's tie it. Let's tie this, this, the same transformation, this concept of transformation, right? Um, because you know, somebody asked me what, what I wanted to be, you know, what I would like to be known for, not necessarily me, but my impact. And I said, ultimate transformation, ultimate transformation as defined is the person comes in one way and leaves a completely different way. And people like to make things overcomplicated. They like to make, they like to think that they got to do a thousand different things when they really need to do three or two okay. or one. Right. Mm -hmm. And you, again, it goes back to that principle of, of, of driving the nail, right? You hit the nail enough times that thing goes, you, you hit around the nail, nothing happens, right? It's mm -hmm. that same principle. So if you look at scaling a business, for example, one of the biggest tips I can give entrepreneurs, because a lot of us entrepreneurs, we want to, we want to go really fast. We want to get the result really now. And that's it. Okay. <laughs> if you don't want to waste the money and you want to scale a business properly, understand it's a three piece framework. All right. Number one, you test. You test your competencies, you test your market, you test your team, you test yourself, you test your products, you test your pro your services. You test it in such a way that you can get so much information from it that you get to become wise in that area or an expert in that area, okay? Once you test it, now you can invest in it, right? You don't want to start investing in stuff that you don't fully understand and the people that you don't know and the relationships that you don't have and the products that you don't understand and the services you're not even sure you can offer, right? You end up wasting a bunch of money. And I'm saying this from experience because I have blown through a bunch of money uh, too. not knowing any better. And I don't want, I don't want entrepreneurs to do that because you can, you could cost yourself five or 10 years of true success or true growth simply because you're not paying attention. All right. So it's test, invest. And then you do what you do best, which is scale. 
love it. Right? Because you've got enough perspective, you've got enough information, you've got the right resources, you've got the right relationship, you've got the right infrastructure. Now you can win and you cannot get those out of order. So that's how you transform a business. Ultimately, that starts with transforming yourself. Yeah. I am so glad that you carved out some time for us today because I could spend hours talking with you, but I know you've got a <laughs> lot on your plate and you have got to run. But tell me where people can find out more information about your podcast because I feel like that's a great place for people to start. Absolutely. Well, if you'd like to consume it video wise, you can just search out my name, Steven Scoggins, and the Stuck to Unstoppable podcast. Um, if you consume it like uh, audio, like I do at the gym, then it's just Stuck to Unstoppable. You can find me on Google Play and Apple and all that good stuff. Um, and if you're interested in Transform You Live, we got a few seats left. That's transformulive.com. And I'll be able to link everything in the show notes so people will have easy access to it so that way they can find everywhere that you are. Thank you again for taking time to visit with us. I appreciate it.